Welcome to the Fit Dad Nation podcast, forging strong fathers and raising a stronger generation. It's time to get up or shut up with your host, Steve Roy. Hey guys, this is Steve Roy, the host of the Fit Dad Nation podcast. Welcome to the show. Thanks for listening. So before I get into today's show, uh, I want to share something that I'm, I'm really excited about. So after months and months in the making, um, I finally opened up our private membership program called the Fit Dad Nation Inner Circle. So this is something I'm, I'm just I'm super proud of, and it's, it's kind of a hub and community for dads looking to reclaim their health and fitness. And I mean, I don't have to tell you, you know, this industry is filled with idiots and fake coaches and scammers and people just looking to make a quick buck by selling you bullshit. And I, I just hate that part of this business. And so this program cuts through all that. It's totally interactive. We've got monthly and even weekly challenges. Um, we're doing live Q&As, workout programs, tutorials. We've got mobility workouts. And we've even got um, quarterly transformation challenges with prizes. Great community. So you know, if this is something that sounds interesting to you, and you're looking for a tribe of like-minded dads working towards the same things, take a look at this program. Um, it can be found at fdnic.com. I'll link to it in the show notes. And uh, let's get to it. So um, today I want to talk about excuses because you know, over the last five years, I've been working specifically with dads. You know, and I've had the opportunity to connect with thousands of them across the world. And I've really noticed some trends when it comes to you know why some are fit and why some are not. And I've definitely seen the same excuses pop up over and over and over. And in, in the last probably three to four years, I've run, I don't know, a number of surveys asking just a few specific questions about you know the biggest struggles, you know, why aren't you fit right now? And, uh, you know, I've got literally thousands and thousands of responses. And so <clears throat> I want to talk about some of the main reasons why you're just not fit and, and just uh, kind of my thoughts on that. But first, you know, I want to do something and I'm going to actually read just a handful of responses. And this is kind of <clears throat> what I'm talking about is because I see I see a lot of emotion. I see a lot of pain and struggle in, in the responses. And there's just like, you know... Uh, it's a struggle to 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 break through this and it and it kills me to see this as a coach and so you know you know I do my best to to help as many guys as I can you know and if if you're ready to make a change you know that's when it'll start happening if you're not if you're just full of excuses if you're full of shit it's just not going to happen but um a couple of these you know they really kind of touch a nerve with me here and and uh, you may resonate with a few of them so you know, so one of the, the first answers I have here, um, someone says, <clears throat> I can't find the time and I've failed at trying to get in shape so many times that I'm discouraged, but really, I'm just tired of being fat and tired and I want to be an awesome and fit dad for my wife and kids. And so, you know, I mean, this, this probably you know, hits you between the eyes because that's what we want, right? We want to be that that fit dad, not only for ourselves, but we want to be there for our wives. We want to be there for our kids, you know, on different levels. We want to be able to play with them. We want to be able to, you know, chase them. We want to be a role model, but it's, it's just not happening. Um, another guy says, I just don't have the motivation. It's just too easy to say I don't have the time after work and after some family time. But in reality, it's probably just not my number one priority and, and not exercising just becomes a habit. And I'm going to actually talk about this in just a minute. Um, another dad says, I have some type of mental block, I think, because I know what I need to do and how to go about it. But really, I just want to eat what I want to eat and I'm just too lazy to work out. So instead, I just use going to work or spending time with the kids as an excuse. Okay, you can probably, you know resonate with that one. Um, uh, uh, we have someone that says, I guess deep down, I dread the pain that comes with making improvements. Now, this is this is interesting to me because, um, you know, the physical pain is one thing, right? I mean, of course, there's, there's pain, but, you know, the way I'm reading this is, 
it's the change, you know, the, the the pain that comes with change, right? We're we're so set in our ways, we're stuck in in doing the same stuff over and over. Yeah, and it is there. There are growing pains, and that's a, that's a real thing. Um, so it's a, it's a really interesting comment. Um, and the last one I have here, um, this this dad says, staying with a program or a diet, so my my commitment eventually stops due to something stressful, and then I'll eat junk food, and it just gets worse from there. I get discouraged and lose any confidence I had to believe that I could actually lose weight. All right, so. These are just a few of many, many, many comments I've I've have um, and I've seen, and so I'm going to break down. Let's see, I don't know. I have a handful here, maybe um, seven or eight bullet points that I want to share with you because some of these are just massive excuses, nothing more. And so, you know, the first one here. Let's talk about you know the, the biggest one by far. When it comes in, now, I'm specifically talking about dads, right? If you're a woman listening to the show, you probably are going to have different excuses or different reasons why you're not fit. But the number one thing for dads is eating healthy. So I've heard, listen, I just have no time to shop or prep or cook. It's too time consuming. And then, you know, at the end of the day, it's just too expensive to eat healthy. And I just, I don't know what to eat. So You know, you may have said these things yourself. And so, you know, first things first, if you don't have time to shop and prep and cook, right, you need to find it, right? You don't have to spend, you don't have to be Gordon Ramsay. You don't have to spend all day in the grocery store. You make a list, you know, I found a lot of success in making recipes that are five ingredients or less because it's just, it's a pain in the ass to to have a huge uh, recipe that you have to make and it's daunting, right? Like, oh shit, I I know I really want to eat healthy tonight, but I've got to stop off and get six different herbs and, uh, you know, two different types of cheeses and quinoa and blah, blah, blah. So keep it very simple. <clears throat> That's your main thing. And you don't need a lot of time. You can prep on the weekends. You can prep with your kids, make it fun, okay? Eating healthy um, is more expensive in my experience, but it doesn't have to be overly so. You know, if you really looked at your budget and what you're spending money on every week, like if you literally counted every dime you spent, you'd find that you pissed away a ton of money where you could easily make up the difference at the grocery store. So instead of spending 100 bucks at the grocery store buying, you know, Triscuits and cheese and crackers and chips and salsa and those types of things, you, you focused on whole foods and vegetables and, and fresh food, you know, produce, you may spend 100 and 25 bucks, 150 bucks. But if you cut corners somewhere else, you can you can certainly do it. And I don't see any better investment than buying whole foods, especially if you're buying supplements. Definitely do not do that before you take care of a good, healthy diet. All right. Um, and then, you know, this one, this one kills me. When someone says, I, I don't know what to eat. I don't know, I don't know how to eat healthy. I'm like, literally, you go to Google. And you can search healthy recipes and you're going to get 150 million results, right? There, That's like one of the most common things on the internet. You know, in the inner circle, I do have a whole um, recipe section, healthy recipe section, which is, which is great. But, you know, that's just pure laziness. Just look it up. I mean, well, I, I know I like chicken and, you know, I kind of like broccoli and I like cauliflower. So just... Just Google the damn thing. So diet is the is the big piece, and just remember, and you've heard this a million times. You know, you can, you cannot out train a bad diet. I don't care how hard you're hitting it in the gym or how long. If your diet isn't good most of the time, not all the time, you're gonna struggle. You're gonna struggle with results. Next up, no time, no time to work out. So this just comes down to priorities. You know, everybody is busy. Um, you know, everyone's got a crazy schedule. You're a dad, you have kids, you have responsibilities, obligations, a career, a, a dog or two. You I mean, you have a million things going on. But when you say you have no time, and there are a few exceptions, and I've only seen a very few in five years, you're just not a priority. And I'm, I'm not saying, you know, that's not, that's not wrong. You know, if you aren't making yourself a priority, that's not a bad thing. It's just not your time. You know, I'm not, uh, no one's going to, no one should push you into it and say, you know what, you, you need to do this. You already know that. You know that all, all the reasons you should be taking care of your, your health. 
it's just, you know, it's just a lot of it's common sense. We've learned it over the years. So to make yourself a priority, you need to figure out what it is that's going to actually make that happen. So for me, when I was married, um, I, I was somebody that just put everything in front of myself. And so I didn't really take care of myself. I mean, I was still working as a trainer, but I really wasn't committed to my own health because I was just so busy. Um, I was working in a career and, and I had two little girls. And so I get it. I understand it. When I got separated, things, you know, fell apart. You've probably heard my story before, but, you know, things went really dark for a while. And I found my way back through fitness. And is because I wasn't being the best dad I could have been. I had no energy. I felt like shit all the time. And so I decided to make my health myself a priority. I went after it full steam. I committed to getting fit. And I did. And seriously, everything changed. I mean, everything improved in my life. And at the end of the day, I mean, listen, if you want a change, right? And I don't, I mean, everybody wants a change. Everybody wants to be fit. Everybody wants to look great. Everybody wants to feel great. But if you, if you legitimately desire it, it's something that's very important to you. You have to make yourself a priority. And I promise you, it's not selfish to do that. It's the other way around. If you're not, if you're that dad that's, you know, you're 30, 40 pounds overweight, you don't feel so great all the time. You don't move well. You get tired walking up a flight of stairs. You know, your sex life is going down the can because, um, you know, your stamina is lousy or you just feel like shit about yourself, right? Those things, everything is going to get better. When you start taking care of yourself, you start feeling better. You're going to start looking better and it's really going to snowball for you. So that's what I'll tell you. Um, energy, another big one. I know I just don't have the energy, right? I get up at five in the morning, I commute for an hour and a half, I sit at a desk for nine hours, I drive home an hour and a half, have dinner with my family, take the kids out to the park, come home, flip on the television, watch Game of Thrones, go to bed and repeat it, right? I mean, it's fucking depressing as shit. I, you know, I just don't believe in that. I did it for a long time. It's just, it's just no way to live in my opinion, but that's what we do, right? So two things, number one, our diets are controlling a lot of this, and our diets are horrible. Number two, our sleep is even worse than that. We're not sleeping. You know, seven, eight hours of good quality, uninterrupted sleep in a dark, cool room is worth so much more than any supplement you could put out there. It just I actually did a show on this recently. <clears throat> it just can't be overstated how important sleep is, but... You know, we're on our phones, we're busy, we're stressed out, we can't fall asleep, we're taking sleep aids, you know, we're getting up early, we're just getting broken sleep, um, and it's just not conducive to energy, but it's it'll, it'll, it has a big impact on your ability to lose weight, lose fat. So first things first, right, just start making a few changes in your sleep patterns if you can. Second, fix your diet. I mean, your diet, if it's not pretty good most of the time, you know, and, and in my experience, most people will overestimate how good they're eating. Oh, yeah, 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 my diet's great. Oh, yeah, yeah, I eat pretty good. And then once you actually put it down on paper and I look at it, I'm like, no, this is horrible. You know, your diet is 60% processed carbohydrates and very little quality protein and it's just a bunch of garbage. So clean it up, fruits, vegetables, lean meats, you know, get rid of anything that's packaged, um, you know, any box foods, all that, basically the middle section of the grocery store is more or less worthless. Um, you can't go wrong with the perimeter, lean meats, eggs, dairy, fruits, vegetables, nuts. So, you know, not uh, anything break, uh, you know, this isn't breakthrough information for you, but it makes a lot of sense and it actually will have a huge impact on your energy. For those of you that hate the gym, and I've heard it a lot, I just I hate working out, I hate the gym. No one says you have to go to the gym, right? I, in an ideal world, yeah, it makes more sense to go to a place where you can lift heavy weights on a consistent basis, right? Because in order to add lean muscle tissue, which is your goal, right? Regardless if you want to lose fat or, or get bigger, you still have to build lean muscle tissue. That's your goal. And so to do that, You've got to break down your muscles, and you do that through 
heavy training, they of course rebuild when you're sleeping and, and you need the presence of enough calories, you need the presence of protein. Um, and so ideally, yes, but not everybody is going to like the gym. Not everyone wants to go lift barbells and dumbbells and kettlebells. So you don't have to do that. So find something that you like. Find some form of exercise, hiking, kayaking, biking, um, whatever it is. I mean, there's a million things, obviously. Find something you like. You know, if you force yourself to go to the gym and you hate it, it's just not going to work long term for you. You know, you're going to be miserable. You're going to be finding excuses. And it's just, it's just no way to, to do it. So, you know, there's plenty of ways around that. Go outside, you know, find a hobby, whether it's, it could even be something like softball or whatever. Even playing with your kids, create games to play with your kids. Last summer, I took my girls out with some equipment that I have, including a battling rope. And, you know, we played um, like tug of war. We were, we were doing all kinds of fun stuff. And, and so there's just there's so many ways to, to incorporate movement into your life. So don't think that you have to go to the gym to get into shape because you don't. Now, for those of you that struggle with staying motivated, and that's a, this is another huge one, right? You start, and then what happens? You hit some small speed bump, and pfft, you're done. So this really comes down to a couple things, in my opinion. Um, it's your why first, uh, as in why do you want to actually get fit? comes down to your habits. If you have a bunch of terrible, unhealthy habits, it's going to be tough to stay motivated because you're going to constantly be derailed. And it's your environment. So those three things are going to play a huge role in you actually staying motivated and sticking around long enough to get results. So, you know, if you hate your job, your marriage sucks, you're beaten down all the time, you know, you're going to struggle because your environment is not conducive to you staying motivated. So you've got to fix that. I mean, you're not going to just go to the gym and, and, and everything in your life is going to get better. I would argue that it makes more sense to do it the other way around, right? Fix your marriage, fix your relationship, you know, go to counseling, do what you have to do. Address that. It's extremely important. Um, you know, if your job is making you miserable, quit. You know, I'm not saying just up and quit tomorrow. I had a side hustle for three some odd years <clears throat> while I was working a job that I hated and I, uh, I created, a, I had a blog and I wrote and I wrote and wrote, 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 wrote. I spent a ton of time trying to build something on the side <clears throat> because I knew I wanted to get out. There's a million opportunities out there. It could be another career. It could be another job. It could be a side hustle. It could be a, a, an online business or a brick and mortar business. doesn't matter. Whatever it is, if you're miserable, it's going to affect every part of your life and you're going to have a, a tough time um, staying motivated. When I was married, um, I worked at uh, a financial institute, actually a couple different financial institutions, but I hated the work. I had an office that was literally a closet. It was no windows. It was dark and crappy. And I was there for five years. And so I was miserable. I mean, I, not only did I hate the work, but I hated the environment. Um, I, and I, I didn't get along with my boss. And so when I came home, I just, I didn't want to do shit, right? The last thing I wanted to do was go exercise. I mean, I had two little girls, so I spent time with them. I just didn't, I didn't want to exercise. I just, life was sucked out of me. And so you may be in that situation, get it fixed, do something about it. You know, it's not going to happen on its own. Someone's not going to just call you up and say, Hey, you want to come work for me? Or, Hey, what's the, your, you know, your, your dream business. Let's, let's create that. No, you got to get off your ass and do it. And in the meantime, obviously that's not a quick fix by any means that or your relationship. In the meantime, use discipline just to get the work done. Okay. There's no other way to do it. Set up a few healthy habits, get rid of a few shitty habits, and then get insanely disciplined with them and just do the work whether you feel like it or not, okay? That's, that's your cure for the motivation blues there, okay? Um, this is one, and, and this is um, one I hear a lot. It's, it's guys that are, that are training and they're working out and they think they're doing all the right things, but they're not getting the results quickly enough and they quit, so you probably have done this yourself. So most people don't stick with a program or a diet long enough to, to, to see results, period. You know why? It's because we all want instant success. And marketers out there and these companies make us believe that it's not only possible, but it's easy, right? Being sold, 
you know, whatever it is, eight minute abs or, you know, lose 30 pounds in 30 days, all that fucking bullshit, you know, it's ridiculous, okay? Getting fit and staying there is not easy. It, it is simple. There's a few simple basic rules to follow. Follow them consistently for a long time. You will get results. You will be fit, but life gets in the way. We get thrown curveballs, you know, seems like every day, and it's just a ton of work. So, People don't want to spend the next three years knowing that they're going to have to bust their ass in the gym and eat good, healthy foods instead of stopping at Wendy's every night, right? They don't want to hear that because we're sold quick and easy or convenience. We want we want to do what we want to do, right? We want to eat what we want to eat. We want to train how we want to train or not train how we want to train. So um, there's no way around it. It takes a shit ton of hard work and consistency to get results. Keep this in mind too. So when you, when someone says I'm not getting results, it could be a bunch of things, but most people associate weight loss <clears throat> with results. I'm not losing any weight. And I've talked about this before, and this isn't the, the show for this because this is a big topic, but anybody, anyone can lose weight, right? Just drop your calories ridiculously low, cut out all carbohydrates, you know, drink less or no water, right? You're going to do, lose weight. But the problem is you don't want to lose weight. You want to lose fat. When you start losing weight, especially quickly, with a lot of these short-term diets, these fad diets, people that are doing keto incorrectly, um, you're going to lose a, a ton of weight. But you're stripping out, you know, first and foremost, water weight, but you're losing much-needed muscle tissue along with fat. So essentially... You know, you're dropping your metabolism by stripping away your muscle tissue, which is the thing that you absolutely need. So please don't confuse the two. Forget losing weight. That's why programs like Weight Watchers and all these other bullshit, you know, programs can advertise these huge success stories because, yes, you know, John lost 85 pounds in four months on Weight Watchers. Well, he was, you know, 350 pounds to start with. And so they put him on a 1,200 calorie diet, and of, yeah, of course he lost a ton of weight. They don't tell you that he lost, you know, 29 pounds of muscle tissue, which just killed his metabolism, right? So, anyway, that's a, a conversation for another show, but please don't confuse that. So, um, back to the diet piece. Um, you know, listen, in America, at least for sure, we're fueled by sugar, caffeine, and processed carbohydrates. That's what we run on. Okay, we're addicted and we're constantly drawn to eating more and more of this stuff. Plus, we have virtually unlimited access to any foods we want at any times. And typically, you know, the less healthy it is for us, the better it tastes, right? That's not an accident. They're not, these food companies are not stupid. They know what they're doing. They know how to entice us. They know how to get us to get addicted and continue to, to eat their foods. I mean, it's just, it's just a huge racket. It drives me insane, but it is what it is. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you, you know what, just stop eating like a fucking slob. No, I'm not going to tell you that because it doesn't work. You can't just go from eating fast food three times a week or Panera or Subway, uh, having chips and a soda, you know, the typical American diet, maybe some oatmeal, maybe some um, breakfast cereal with milk. Dinner is, you know, some pasta with uh, meat, maybe a vegetable, some rolls, right? A typical diet. You know, and it, it, you know, when you say it, it doesn't sound bad, but when you look at it on paper and you break it down into actually the quality of the food and the macronutrients, it's terrible. As far as trying to get into better shape from a, a body composition standpoint, it's just, it's a terrible way to do it. And so instead of going cold turkey, you have to just wean yourself off. I mean, trying to just go from eating the average American diet to eating a very healthy, clean diet based on fruits and vegetables and lean meats and, you know, kind of the right foods, um, it's going to often result in just, you know, crushing failure for you. You're going to have cravings, you're going to be angry, you're going to be struggling, and it's miserable. And when you're miserable, it's just not going to stick because nobody wants to be miserable. And so it just doesn't stick. So uh, a few years ago, I was really, really hooked on Red Bull. I was drinking two a day, sometimes three. Uh, I had that habit for years. I had it was like 10 years. Love my Red Bulls. Every morning, first thing, ice cold Red Bull, bam. Have another one at like one o'clock. Finally, I started feeling lousy after like 10 years. It took 10 years, but I just 
when I'd have one, I felt crappy. Like it just made me feel worse. Like something was just rotting inside my body. That's what I felt like. My organs were just rotting and they may have been. And so um, I went cold turkey, mistakenly. I said, fuck this. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm taking this back. You know, I'm, I'm done. And so I stopped drinking them. And I literally spent the next week with this pounding headache. And obviously it was a caffeine withdrawal. I probably shouldn't have done that. But it was the, sh- the sugar and the other garbage they put in there. And, uh, you know, it lasted for a while. But um, it's just it's just another way to do it. So wean off of this stuff. Replace you know one bad food, one healthier food. You know, don't go all or none. Yeah, you know, it's very difficult to do that. Um, let's talk about weekends, binge eating. Another big one. This is huge, 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 huge. Right. All right, man. We're finally doing this. Um, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm following this new diet program. It's awesome. It's really you know clean eating. Um, I'm going to do this every day. And so, yeah, you're at work. You stick to this. You know, you're intermittent fasting in the morning and your lunch is super healthy and then your dinner is super healthy and you're feeling great. Then the weekend comes, right? And you're like, oh, shit, I've been doing awesome. Knock down a couple of beers, a couple of chips and salsa, you know, maybe a dozen or three hot wings, a bunch of ranch and blue cheese on there. And then you feel like a piece of shit, right? Next day comes, you're like, oh, man, I feel crappy. Fuck it. I'm just going to have pizza for lunch let's just do it right and then what happens like monday comes and you're like shit i just ruined my entire i just blew up my whole diet i'm just gonna forget it it's not even worth it anymore right no 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 that's not the way to do it here's the thing regardless of how poorly you've eaten the la- your last meal if your last meal was ten thousand calories of pizza hut deep dish pepperoni pizza doesn't matter you're literally one meal away from changing your health, okay? You didn't get fat overnight. You're not going to get fit overnight. One bad meal means literally nothing, nothing. All you have to do is shake that off. It takes some mental strength to do that, but seriously, shake it off. Start again. Your next meal can be fine, okay? Do not let that derail you because no one meal, two meals, a weekend, it cannot derail you. It's not going to have that much of an impact on you overall, okay? consistency is going to beat that 100 times out of 100, okay? Plan to eat eat good, high-quality foods 80 to 90% of the time. That's it. If you can stick with that, you have 10, 15, 20%, whatever you want, of the foods that you actually really, truly enjoy, the things that you really find, um, you know, your happiness in, and everyone has those few foods. For me, it's Pop-Tarts. I love chocolate fudge Pop-Tarts. Um, you can have them. It's not going to matter, okay? Getting started is another one, um, and I just have one more thing to talk about after this, but getting started, you, you know, if you've been, if you haven't worked out in 15 years or more, right, the last thing you should be doing is hitting the P90X hard on day one, and I see this all the time. Oh, man, I used to be a, you know, college basketball, college football player. Man, I used to lift all the time. I was in awesome shape. Yeah, but you haven't done anything in 15 years, what do you think your body has done, right? You're, you're just asking for an injury, right? So, uh, you know, what I would tell you is start where you're at, not where you think you should be or where you want to be or where your ego wants to take you or what, or what others or what you think others are thinking about you. Like, well, I can't just do this little wimpy workout because, you know, I'm this big, strong, bearded dude. Who cares? Seriously, you're going to hurt yourself and then you're done. So your job, after a long layover, getting started, restarted, whatever, start by walking, start by moving more, stretching, light exercise, and then you get your muscles and your tendons and your ligaments prepared for training. This could take weeks. I mean, you you can't take a whole, a decade off or more, warm up for two days, and then hit it hard. Get right on the bench press and start pressing out what you used to in college. You're going to get hurt. Seriously, put the ego away. It drives me crazy. You know, we as guys, we have egos. We want to lift heavy shit. We want to be macho. But especially as we get up into 30s and 40s, really, really bad idea. Your priority is to stay healthy, to be able to move well and be injury free. It's seriously, it's that important. Um, Last thing I want to talk about. Not having a support network, I've heard this a lot, and this is this is a legit issue. So 
you may be motivated. You may be doing all the right things. You may have every all your ducks lined up. You know, you've got your program. You've got your your diet ready. Um, the gym membership is good to go. You've got your new gym sneakers. All, everything's ready to go. But your significant other is negative, not on board, or just doesn't give a shit that you're doing it, right? That is a huge problem. Contrary to what you may have heard, it's very difficult, very difficult to, to look the other way and say, you know what, you know, you can be negative, I don't care. You know, I'll do my thing and, you know, you can be miserable over here. Very difficult. If you don't have a, a partner that's on board with you, it, it, it doesn't. they don't have to be your cheerleader, but they need to be at least positive and, and supportive of what you're trying to do. And let's be, fa- you know, let's be honest, why wouldn't a spouse want to be supportive of you taking care of yourself and getting fit? You know, we know the answer to that, of course, is they're selfish or they feel so badly about themselves they don't want to see you go out and start taking care of yourself. Happens in a lot of marriages, you know, even good marriages, but it happens in a lot of marriages that are kind of, eh. I'm not telling you ever, I would never tell anybody to, you know, get a divorce or, or leave them because of it, but you have to have a serious conversation. I mean serious conversation about this because if your significant other is not supportive, you're gonna always, you're gonna struggle. You are going to struggle. Okay. It's it's that important. So misery loves company and you need to find an alternate environment. So I mean find some kind of support network, you know, if it's not at home, maybe it's with a few coworkers, maybe there's a challenge you're doing at work. Maybe it's a, ch- it's a church group. Maybe it's an online community like, you know, we have at the inner, in the inner circle. Or maybe it's just a few of your your buddies. Right? A couple of people that actually care about you as a person and care about your success and then aren't jealous and aren't going to hold you back or sabotage you for, for personal reasons, find those people, you, you know, that, that they're out there. I mean, even if you have no friends that are going to be supportive, they're out there. You'll, you can find groups. So seriously, it's, it's seriously that important that you find a positive support group. And it's actually the main reason why everything that, that I do now with the Fit Dad Nation is in groups. You know, I used to do a lot more one-on-one coaching, but I found that, you know, men really do better in in tribes. So when you, when you bring a bunch of like-minded guys together that are working on the same things, it's a positive environment. You know, everyone's building each other up. I'm not trying to break each other down, and it's a huge win. And so, you know, I, those are just a few things I wanted to share with you today. Um, all actually extremely important. So please listen to this a couple times and and... If there's anything I can do to help you, you can always reach out to me at stevefit.nation.com, you know, and um, and I appreciate your support listening to the show. And again, I'm going to drop a link to our new program. It's it's an awesome, awesome community called the Fit Nation Inner Circle, fdnic.com. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks for joining us. And remember, if you want more information, check out the Fit Dad Basecamp group on Facebook. And don't forget to stop by fitdadnation.com. Until next time, keep kicking ass and taking the next step. You can do this, Dad.